Hey everyone, welcome to the one hour build with Walker and Ruben. If you don't know about one hour build, it's where we're going to take one of our weekly projects and cut it in front of you and put it together. Yep. So what are we doing today, Ruben? We are making some dice towers. Check it out. That Pretty is the cool. uh, Skeleton King dice tower. And then this is the more simpler one. Yeah, it's very simple. <clears throat> Mixed medium, so we have acrylic on the side and uh, wood for the panels. And I just have been really into minimalism lately. So that's what that's about. And this actually is, this has three different file types. So you can have the Skeleton King or uh, just the tower, like the these side pieces, just a simple tower or just a plain file. So if you want to take this, this exact like shape and modify it yourself, you don't have to mess with this stuff. So just a plain file. I call it the open canvas file. So you can do with whatever you this want. This came out really cool, dude. Thanks, man. Yeah. I appreciate that. So what are dice towers? Everybody wanted me to make one. What is a dice tower? I had no idea, to be honest, yeah. until this week. But I guess you just throw your dice in there and then it rolls them for you. Yeah. basically and then they're ready to go so you can't off. cheat with rolling i guess i guess yeah uh, uh, maybe the i thought it was interesting yeah, yeah. maybe the D, D guys can tell us a little more yeah yeah we got the we got the shout out we got the was it 21 sides yeah guys. <coughs> i think so our uh our co-worker scott said that we couldn't have regular dice so no we yeah. look like posers yeah, so that's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> i guess we have to have the D, &D dice which we went out on lunch and grabbed them, and he was so excited about it. Yeah. So I guess without further ado, we'll get cutting the project, which we're going to cut the simple one out. Um, we're going to cut it out of Flamingo Romark material. Do you have that material with you, Ru Ru There we go. So that is the 12 by 12 Flamingo uh, acrylic color hues by Romark. That comes in the maker pack with every muse that you purchase. Yep. So there you go. This c file can be easily cut on that size material. It's actually like 11 by seven. So you'll have a little extra material. And for those who don't know, people on Facebook, go ahead and message Ruben. He's right here and yeah. he will answer all your questions, right? You're yeah. gonna answer all of them. I'm I mean, just gonna you'll help me out, right? No, I'm gonna uh, sit back today. Uh, Alright. <laughs> so if we go into the software real quick, I'll show you the file in uh, in the software. So here we have the file, just a simple uh, five what is it? yeah, five piece file. Yeah. Very simple. There's no need to have the raster file on this. So I just went ahead and visually turned it off. Can you, you can you, you delete it too or yeah, oh. I can delete it as well. So there now we just have the vector. And what did you uh, just out of curiosity, where did you make it in? Illustrator? Or? I made it in Inkscape. So if we okay. go to Inkscape, here's my Inkscape. And this is funny, actually. Because right before, uh, we had a little extra time. And I had this battery pack for my phone. Like okay. one of these battery packs. And Phil actually got this for me. Because oh, cool. he always tries to contact me you know, on the weekend or something. And my phone's always dead. Yeah. Uh, I always forget to charge it. Uh, Same one. Yeah. yeah. So he got me this super thoughtful gift. The best guy ever. Like, be he's awesome software engineer and he even better friend. Anyways, enough about him. I was bored and I wanted to engrave He Man on there. I don't know if you can see that, but came I out pretty good, dude. Thanks, man. I thought it'd be funny if it said, "I have the power," yeah. right? That's He-Man saying. <laughs> but I kind of pushed it off a little to the side, and it reads more like I have He-Power, oh. which is a happy accident, like because <laughs> it's actually still applicable. Yeah. So I think it's kind of cool. All right, so that's the software. And I simply just grabbed this image off yeah. Google, and then I grabbed this image off Google. So that's two auto-traced images. I didn't have to really do much. Cool. And then I just put my own text in there, and it had to be Comic Sans, of course. Oh, yeah. You know, Comic Sans is classic. <laughs> Graphic designers all across the world are yeah. rolling right now. I know, <laughs> they're shaking their heads. No! 
my dad actually created he had a business like a legit business and he picked Comic Sans oh, for the text. No way. Yeah. For everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was geez. it was awesome. <laughs> what do you guys think about that? Comic Sans <laughs> fans or <laughs> Oh goodness. He's a good guy though. Alright, so we'll go back to the software. So the software is browser based if you don't know. Yeah, you just punch in the IP address that the machine throws cool. into your browser. You don't have to be on the internet, just as long as you're on the same network. Now we have our vector properties over here. We're just going to select 20 speed, which I've already done. 100 power, 100 current, one pass. Okay. Um, and then if we go to the machine, we're just going to cut it. I had a good question this week. Uh, people on Facebook, they're having discussion. They're wondering, what, what is the difference between power and current? All right, so did we go to the, um, so I'm going to start the job while we're answering that question. Okay. Um, so power and current. Power is the amount of energy you're giving that uh, vector mark. Okay. And then current is going to be the pulse rate of the laser. Gotcha. Uh, Nick used the awesome analogy. It's like a jackhammer. If you speed up the jackhammer, that pulse rate is going to be faster. Okay. And if you slow it down, it's going to have, you know, less pulses. And you can actually see this on um, paper. If you cut paper, really? you can lower that current to the point where it's, uh, you can actually see it serrated. Wow. Which is pretty cool if That's you want to do cool. really low power, really low current. Yeah. And then you can actually make a nice little fold there. Oh, wow. That's yeah. That's pretty cool. I think it's awesome. You can actually visually see it. And paper's a good example of lowering your current to get a light, like a less char. That's cool. Because no matter what, your edge is getting cut. So it's going to have a brown edge if it's something like paper or wood. Yeah, paper. And paper burns so easily. Like, yeah, you know. so playing with that current is very important. And it will reduce that charred edge. Cool. Good to know. Good to know. The more you know. And what was the, the outline <clears throat> width for this project, the stroke width? So when I design, I always design with uh, in Inkscape from a... But uh, I give it one point. Okay. Uh, with Illustrator, I believe you use like 0.25. Okay. Uh, Corel is hairline. So hairline. use hairline for that. And then you won't have any issues. If you have a really thick stroke, what it's going to do is actually look like it's passing twice. Because it's actually cutting on both sides of the circle, uh, that thick stroke. So if you see like a double pass and you like, I didn't specify it to pass twice. That's because your stroke width is too thick. Gotcha. We got Jason here. It says, Comic Sans as a default email text drives me nuts. Uh -huh. I agree. Why do they even have it? That, like, it I, I, I love how like campy and corny it is. <laughs> I love it. It's terrible. It's just one of those things like it's so bad it's good now. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> so, we're cutting. There he goes. Yeah, that's on. The <coughs> extractor is on. Yeah, and yeah. the, uh, as you can see, there's no flame up this time, yeah. so we have the air compressor on. That, this week I was cutting acrylic. Walker comes running in, he's like, dude, were you cutting acrylic? And I was like, yeah. I didn't realize that the fume extractor wasn't connected to the power strip anymore. So when I went to hit the power strip on, I thought the fume extractor was on. Oh, so okay. I ended up smelling up the whole office. <clears throat> of it smelled so bad. People had to take their lunches like when I... Yeah, yeah I just went and took yeah. lunch. It was pretty bad. It was bad. So make sure you turn that fume extractor on if you're <clears throat> cutting acrylic. Yeah, because it doesn't smell too nice. No. <laughs> so... As you can see, we're cutting the acrylic right now, and you can tell that it's going through on acrylic. It's going to make little sparks as it hits, like uh, little like highlights. You see it like pop right yeah. there? What that's doing is cutting all the way through and making contact with the uh, aluminum honeycomb. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. So you can actually see it going through. So you know it's going through. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's like neon right now. Bit. Yeah, it's yeah. Re this uh, acrylic is it's different because the edge it's almost like edge lit but not edge lit. It it really shows like that's hard to see. Oh, oh. hard to see in this lighting, but 
This is one of the projects on the free projects page. We got Muse Hobby Laser users wants to know where are you cutting the acrylic at? Inside or outside? We're cutting yeah. inside. We have a fume extractor hooked up that's uh, absorbing most of the smell and fumes. Yeah. Muse Hobby Laser users. I need to check them out. That was a good tip. I didn't know that if it's, you know, showing that. Little. Yeah, it's a little, you can't do it with wood. Yeah. Obviously, but it, it is good to know. Yeah, it's pretty helpful. Yeah, you can watch it spark, bark, bark. I have a question for you. So yeah. this week I got uh, people on Facebook, they were wondering, you know, that ghosting you, some, that sometimes happens with like a file or whatnot. What, what is the cause of that? Ghosting. So, w what specifically is happening? It's like almost like double of oh, each thing, okay. and then, or it looks like faded out somewhat. Okay, like it's like there's the text, and then it's kind of doubled up, yeah. like, uh, but right under it yep. a little bit. Yep. Okay, so that could happen from a misalignment. Okay. And then you always want to check your uh, fo your definitely your focus. Yeah. But the cleanliness of your mirrors and optics. Okay. So I've seen that when the main lens is actually slightly cracked. Gotcha. And it will skew that beam to make two beams slightly. Wow, that's the little yellow circle one, right? Yeah, the yeah. little yellow circle. You wanna make sure that the convex side, or the, yeah, the convex side is facing up when you place that back into your uh, laser head. Gotcha. So that, and then also there's the beam combiner. That is a little yellow lens type thing that's right at the front where the laser actually has output. Okay. And that's gonna combine the, what is it, the red dot diode and the laser itself. And sometimes that's fogged up or cracked or something of that sort, and that will throw that beam even more so. Gotcha. So, okay. always check your mirrors and optics. Good to know. Yeah, buddy. So what, what do you like better? you like Inkscape or Illustrator better? Uh, I like Inkscape because it's free. Okay. So if you're balling on a budget, definitely Inkscape. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> if you like Illustrator, you prefer Illustrator, that's completely fine. Uh, but Illustrator has a lot more options. Yeah. Like you can't really warp text like very cool uh, in certain ways. It's just a, just has a lot more function, but you don't really need that as much with laser cutting. Yeah. So Inkscape's a nice base if you don't want to pay for software. Got it. <clears throat> or BitTorrent it. Some people do it, you know? Yeah. Tisk tisk. Tisk tisk. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see it flashing really yeah. well right there. That's cool, dude. I always wonder if they like people watching, they're like, what are they looking at? Yeah. Well, we have two screens yeah. that we watch. We basically have like a little monitor down here so we can like see how everything's going basically. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Ruben has Facebook really huge up this way. Yeah. That way Walker can see the questions too. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for joining us seven viewers. And thank you for joining us on YouTube when it's posted later. If you guys have any questions. Feel free to ask. Yeah, so. or if you want to see something, <clears throat> or you know what? One thing I want is like weekly projects, right? Yeah. Let's have some people, like customers, send us weekly projects. Yep. And like, you know, we'll just put your name on it, your picture, whatever you want, and you can sponsor that week's project. That'd be cool. You got like a little design you were having fun with, but you didn't really want to do anything with it. You know, you're not making money with that design. Yeah. Send it to us. We could, you know, finish it, do whatever you want, and just put your name on it. Yeah. So. So, um, send it to marketing at fslaser.com. That'd be the best place to send that stuff. fslaser.com? Yep. fslaser.com. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. Now, what is next week's um, uh, contest? Jason says, I'd like to see the cribbage board made. Curious how you could laser cut out peg holes. Peg holes? Have What's you seen a, a That's where you like drop the little thing, right? Yeah. 
Am I right, Jason? Correct me if I'm wrong. It's like where you drop the little. It's like yeah, and goes, and it goes through. Yeah. Oh, that's super easy. Yeah, yeah we can um, do that. Let's wait. I'm, I'm gonna be a hundred percent on that, but All I think right. that's what it is. I mean, we we do have the power of Google. And then Steve wants to know how to use the camera. How to use the camera? Yeah. All right. Well, Steve, just for you, let's go back to the software. Is it the job finished? Yeah, the job's oh, finished. Cool. So let me just double check on that job. So. Uh, so cut out real nice. Real nice. All right, so we have a lot more material left to use. So we'll save that for later. We have a scrap bin that we just put all our scraps in that Ruben can do little posts like uh, the Olympic project. Yeah. yeah. So if we can move to the camera. I move the camera to build the uh, project. Now what's fun about these is I never tell Ruben how I put these together. I just hand him the pieces and watch him panic. Surprise. <clears throat> so we'll see how we can do this here. All right, how do we put this together, Ruben? Seems pretty easy. Yeah, I mean, I gave you the simple one. That one, that one would have been a little, a little more difficult. Just a little bit. All right, cool. Do you have to glue this at all, or? Uh, yeah, it depends on what material you have. Like, those notches are good for uh, three mil in general, but some there's so many variants in materials and variables that uh, you know it it could change. So if you wanted to for this specific material and you needed to, then definitely you know use some glue. But that's very straightforward. And then also you could cut multiples and then just swap the material out, right? Yeah. If you wanted to, could you extend this like? make like a double stack one almost yeah that would like, that would be cool that'd be pretty you want to cool. see if it works like put it on top yeah it would be this way right yeah yeah yeah, think, yeah, yeah. yeah. okay all right so we'll try it oh <laughs> close close i think i got the cribbage thing wrong oh did you yeah what's he saying he said he's gonna message me the photo, but I don't think that was it. So, oh, okay. Yeah, we'll look forward to seeing what that looks like, Jason. Um, Norbert has a question. He says, "How? Well, how can you cut polyester?" Polyester. So polyester is just the same. It's really easy because it's just a plastic-based fabric. Okay. So plastic-based fabric is really awesome because when you cut that. Like traditionally, if you cut like cotton or den denim, something like that, you have an edge that could fray. All okay. the little threads, you know, like go like this. But when it's a plastic base, then it actually sears the edge closed with the heat. Gotcha. So, you know, you have a closed fabric pattern that's not going to fray. Okay. So sewing it or doing whatever to it's really easy. That's cool. What, uh, like what's the general speed and power settings that you would use for that? Or just like too varies too much. It's well, there is some variation, but it's actually pretty fast. It's like you can do a hundred speed, like four power. Okay. And it's just gonna, you know, yeah, just tear right through that polyester like nothing. And the accuracy is really like impressive as well. Really? So, yeah. Cool. So I want to see if we lower the camera. I want to see if the uh, if the dungeon master tower works. I actually haven't done this, so it does. So this is for the dungeon master himself, the skeleton king. Don't forget about the camera. Oh yeah, yeah. camera. All right. So what we're going to do is go into the software and I'll show you how to uh, take pictures using the camera from there. Thanks so, Steve for reminding us. Yeah. yeah. So we have our uh, camera icon right here. We're just going to go ahead and, well, let's look at the laser head. So we're going to lower the laser head. You can see this red dot in the software. That's the laser head. Moving. That's doing that real time right now? Yeah, real oh, time cool. showing you exactly where it is. So you just want it out of this bound, this three by three. You want it outside of that anywhere on top of your material. And make sure that it is on top of your material. 
Okay. That way it's going to give you the most accurate reading. So at that point, you're just going to click the camera icon. It's going to give you this prompt, making sure that you're outside of that three inch by three inch area. And, uh, and if you're not, it won't go through. Yeah, it won't go through. All you do is hit continue. And it takes nine photos, stitches them together to create one photo. Yep. We are running the lid open to show the cut go on. So it might have an issue because it doesn't like uh, the camera being so overexposed with the light. So if it doesn't go through, I'll try to close the lid and then take that, you know, try to redo it. So it should have been done by now. So I'm gonna cancel it. I'm gonna clear these jobs real quick. And if, yeah, we're still in the software. So if you see this, we're, we're deleting these jobs from the actual palette, the project section. That's going to help your camera go quicker. So, so those, that those just build up there, and then yeah, they'll so build. They should be cleared out, like yeah. If you're not using those projects, clear them out. Yeah, I think it's gone right now. Sounds like it. Yeah. All right, so it's going to take these nine images and stitch them together, showing one image. And then from there, we can drag and drop our design on top of the material, wherever we want it, scale it so it fits and whatnot. So, cool. so we don't have any material, but this is for our buddy Steve. And we're just going to show the honeycomb on the inside. Now, we have what's inside is our dirty honeycomb. Oven cleaner. Yeah, oven cleaner is the tip. Yep. What week tip was that? Uh... Tuesday. All right. yeah. So we will drag my desktop is a mess. So we'll drag the minimal file back up. If you guys have any suggestions for laser tip Tuesday, let me know. Yeah, if uh, you guys have some awesome yeah. tips. Yeah, DM me, let me know. Alright, so back to the software, we have our file right here. Wow. And that's gonna be the raster and vector. We don't need the raster for that, so so basically you just drag it over. Yeah, say say this area of clean honey clean ish honeycomb was your material. Yeah. And you wanted your design to fit within that area, you know, you can do so. And if we Would that be like a mini one? Yeah, it'd be uh, a mini mini one. Oh uh, cool. It'd probably be uh, suitable for paper because the notches would be so small, but it wouldn't work with normal dice. Gotcha. But yeah, and that's where it would be, and y you can always double check it, run your perimeter, and you'll see that red dot in the software running that perimeter. And what's cool about the new software is it will run that perimeter until you don't want it to run anymore. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, the old yeah. software, you had to run it, and it would stop. Yep. And if you missed it, you'd have to go again. Yeah. So it's nice that it repeats itself. Especially if you have like your computer away from you, or say if you have your setup like in the garage or something and oh, yeah. working on your laptop in the house like yeah, most yeah. people that live in the east coast are super cold you know yeah. oh yeah but, or, like forget being in the garage i'll just do everything in my house where it's warm and then go out there and run the job real quick so. yeah i do like that because i can be in my office yeah. and then the 48th in the warehouse and just hit perimeter and then run out there, out there and it's still going until i'm done yep so we do have a what is that the 20 by 12 uh, pro oh yeah the baby B pro right the baby pro yeah and um, I think it's forty five hundred dollars with the chiller so pretty good deal take advantage of that now why is that pro an awesome choice because it fits in your house so we're just saying how you know if you don't have that one if you're work you basically probably be working in the garage so if you have that the smaller pro you can fit in a doorway into your house and you can work inside your house Get yep. a fume extractor, you're set. And something like this battery pack that's really thick, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, moving your head too much because you actually have the Z table that gives you eight inches of up and down play. Yeah. Also has a small pass through so you can put a little slightly larger material. Yeah. I, I, someone actually had a question about this. How much weight does the Z table hold? 
Do you know off the top of your head? No, that's okay. a great question. But yeah. I, I have put like 60 pounds worth of, I forget what it was. It was like a giant granite slab. Wow. Yeah, and it worked fine. You engraved the granite? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool, dude. Yeah, yeah. so. I think Michael Wilcox had that question, so. Yeah, some people actually do headstones with it. Jeez. Yeah. It's, I actually, I did see someone doing that, headstones, yeah. but depressing, <laughs> but. Depressing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, dude, we gotta get you a mouse pad. Dude. Just, I know you got a laser Walker's cut like one. using the mouse on his leg and stuff. Yeah, struggle is it, real. It works. So I think that's it. So yeah, a um, couple things. Weekly contests. Oh yeah, there we uh, go. this week is wood. So go ahead and uh, do the weekly contest. Make something out of wood. Or if you're making something out of wood over this long weekend, I know like a lot of people have kids. They have the four day weekend. So yep. sure get away from the kids for a little bit and make something so anything would anything would literal yep okay and uh what else what's next week uh next week what laser talk right laser talk we have laser talk and a one hour build where we're doing the birdhouse finally cool uh because it kept getting pushed because people wanted the dice tower so so hard they yeah. just wanted it the they, avocado birdhouse oh yeah avocado yeah. birdhouse so I think that is it. Nerdboard says, "Let's see you engrave granite." Would be cool. All right. How it about we? Though. How about we? Uh, we put together the birdhouse. Okay. Which we're not going to really show that cut because there's a lot of cuts and they're yeah. boring. It takes a long time. Yeah, it's yeah. just a, it's a cool project, but it's going to take a while to cut. So how about we assemble the birdhouse and engrave granite? Sounds, Sounds like good? a plan to me. Nice, easy. So and next you can week. Watch it. Next week, no Norbert. Yeah. yeah, call us out if we forget. Yeah. But I'm gonna make a note right here. So I uh, like us, tweet us, smash that subscribe button. Follow us on Instagram. Uh, That's it, man. And yeah, until next time. Keep making.